Holy hockaloogie, Daniel Sun. <laughs> it is Monday. <laughs> we got a lot of snot on a Monday, but uh, we're recovering from a very long weekend. Rob Morales, our CEO network at Studio 110 here in Phoenix, Arizona, with my wonderfully beautiful co host and the very special, the very kind, the very ecstatic Miss Ashley Miller. Great American title, everybody. Yeah. Hello, everyone. <laughs> It's an uh, awesome Monday. It's a very uh, snot-filled. It's snot your other Monday. It's not. It is snot your any other Monday. I thought it was a boogie, but it's not. <laughs> Something like that. We're, we're going a little crazy. It, I do it, have it, a little boogies. It's allergies. Great. I'm glad we have distance between <laughs> us. <laughs> I don't get to feel the wrath of, of booginess. Uh, so we're here on a, on a Monday uh, talking about the Phoenix housing market. Uh, if you're on uh, Facebook, Twitch, uh, LinkedIn, go ahead and hit that like button because we uh, appreciate it and we give you the love as much as you give us. Uh, if you're on YouTube right now, hit the like button and subscribe. You know, why not watch us every week here at uh, RCO Network? I know. We've been <laughs> out of commission because we had the holiday. And then yeah, we've been a couple Robert days. had to do some jury duty. Yeah, had some jury duty last week. The, wow, guys, wow, the guy was wow. found not guilty. I know, as he should be, but we won't talk about that. Uh, he's, uh, Ashley's very 420 friendly. <laughs> oh, I don't even smoke pot. <laughs> but anyway. Well, anyway, we're going to talk about China. Oh, are we talking about you? Are we go, we're going right into it. Yeah, I want to talk about uh, this. So, um, here, let me get to this. So, part. I want to go back to about 13 years ago when the Lehman Brothers, if you guys remember this, yeah. this was basically the crash 13 years ago. Gosh, it seems like it was yesterday. Uh, seems like it was yesterday. Well, now we're going through all this stuff with China and Evergrande. How do yep. you say that? Evergrande. Uh I don't believe in, again, this is just my opinion, that we are going to experience what we experienced 13 years ago. Because, yeah, I don't believe so either. Uh, everyone's so fearful, and that's why we named the show Feel the Boom, and what kind <laughs> of boom is it? Yeah, I mean, uh, overall, we've been having a housing boom, meaning that the, the prices of houses have just accelerated in the, in the 15, 20, 25% gains, even 40% year over year gains in, in some markets. And we've been feeling this, this housing crunch. Buyers have been, you know, bought out of the market. Um, you know, the interest rates are still historically low. And we start to see the cracks of what happened because of the, the whole viral thing. You know, and this is one of them. So China, uh, you know, Ever uh, Grande, and, and I've been trying to do a little bit more research. I've been trying to find a little bit more about what's been going on with Ever Ever Grande. There's not much. I mean, uh, there's a lot of info, but it's like nothing is substantial. Like, yeah, and so concrete. this is this is one of China's largest uh, manufacturers for housing residential. Um, you know, they essentially, from my understanding, and please, if you're in watching right now and you're watching us uh, live. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, they're either uh, China's first or second largest housing developing uh, company out there. And it, it, it sends shockwaves. Today, I mean, looking at stocks, I mean, the Dow dropped in three or f f nearly 500 points, I believe. It, not, it was a significant amount. We're not talking about the stock market. I know, but what, <laughs> I, I, know, but what I mean, it's significant because it's impacting us. Anything okay. China does, basically everything you buy... Everything we've bought, I mean, if you look at the bottom of anything you've bought in the last 60 days, yeah, chances are, most likely, uh, it's going to say made in China. Well, yes. <laughs> a few of the things that I've been uh, a little butthurt about going to buy was uh, my hair extensions. They're not on Amazon? So, <laughs> no, I didn't buy them from Amazon, but I usually buy them from Sally's Beauty. They've been out for months and months and months. And I'm like, oh, have you seen this? Quite, like, this is disgusting. But I haven't been able to buy those. And then uh, I'm flipping a couple of houses right yeah. now, and I can't find mastic, which is the material, if you guys don't know, that you use to put on tile. Um, I All Home Depots are out of it. Even, like, junction boxes. Junction boxes would be what you put your, uh, you know, when you turn your lights on and off? Yeah. Like, the box behind the drywall that you guys don't, most people don't see, the the plugs go into those. Yeah. Can't find those. I mean, it's a small little thing. So how are we able to finish a home if we don't, if, all the stores are out of everything. I mean, they're yeah. they were ugh, they're out of everything. It's just crazy. So so Evergrande is is about to default on their on their loans. Uh, they they build to complete. We're here. We we build a new home and we we have it paid off as it's built, kind of like a, 
uh, just in time kind of ordering. Right. So you buy something today, you have it built, and then you pay for it. You don't. Uh, this company builds in masses, so they build entire housing units and then they sell them after the fact. But uh, I, they're facing, and it looks like they're facing the same issues that we're facing here, just supply issues. Right. You know, uh, it wasn't too long ago that China shut down their whole port because one person uh, was found to be positive for, for the virus. And we're starting to see those supply impacts in housing, you know. And, and I, I really want to relate this back to new builds yeah. and some of the things that you're doing. You know, you're trying to flip a house. Uh, trying to get get everything squared away and and fix it. Well, and I I don't necessarily like to use the word flip. Uh, what we are fix. doing is we're taking a home that most people may not be able to afford or yeah. have the the time to make it into the beautiful house that they want to live in. Yeah. So maybe the house was for sale. I'm just throwing out numbers. It's called 120 thousand, but it would have taken 15 thousand to put into it. We're of their own cash money, would they have the ability to do that? Probably not. So the word flip sounds so investory, like like I'm gonna I'm I'm screwing people out of money, but I'm not. I'm taking a house because no. I just love doing this. Like I love hammers and you know, I'm wearing freaking overalls right now. <laughs> like I just love it. Like I love taking apart a house and putting it back together with my special little touches and and knowing that I'm creating a home for somebody because there's a difference. I bought a house, I'm creating no. a home, but I am finding the lack of supplies. Like I put more miles on my car driving to Home Depot and Lowe's and Ace Hardware and yep. all these things. I couldn't even find a push broom at, at Harbor Freights the other day because they're out of push brooms. And it's like... And for Harbor like, Freight to be out of push brooms. <laughs> that seriously, that's, they're known to be for like every supply possible. So it's been very frustrating because the whole yeah. goal was to purchase a home at a lower cost, put money into it and being able to yeah. sell a home that was suitable for somebody who didn't have the dollar bills to put into it and make it into a family home. So I, I, I'm on, I'm on like such a fence here right now with the housing market because there are still properties and even land that's available. But once you get it, and even if yeah. you get what we call a construction loan, uh, we need to get a lender on here to talk about like a uh, renovation loan. If you're a lender, if you're a lender, <laughs> you're a lender out there and you want to talk about this, yeah. uh, renovation loans are fabulous. But with that being said, finding a contractor. Yeah. So now you found one, finding the material, and they only give you six months to do it with that type of loan. It can be very frustrating. Labor is another thing too. I mean, and we labor. didn't we didn't even address that either. I mean, we the article was solely kind of talking about supply issues, supply chain issues, not having the labor to actually manufacture some of these smaller items that you need to complete a house. Yeah, like which a is, which is junction box, which is about this big, made out of plastic. Yeah, just a plastic little junction box you throw like a line of electric. Right, thing. exactly. So I'm, I am nervous, not going to lie. I, and, no. and I wouldn't have been as nervous if I'm not in the process of doing this with a couple of these, these condos yeah. that we're doing going out and literally hitting the streets, the pavement with my kids and my car and, and the Home Depot knows me by name. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, what are we going to do in the housing market? The prices just keep rising. Yeah. And, and uh, um, this article, again, we, it talks about a shortfall in the homes. You know, we're not, we're, we're not just, we're not building enough homes no. and, uh, and not simply to keep up with demand. I mean, we're just in a shortfall. People aren't selling one because they're concerned where the market's going. You know, if they sell at a very high place, uh, a very high rate, where are they going to go? Idaho. You know, or Morristown. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think I think something you were scrolling through here earlier before we got on, I and will, I think something said I'll something about it. Idaho. I don't know. A I, town. I, will get, I think uh, that was a different article. Yeah, it's oh, a different article. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're getting to that one. But we're just on a, we're just on a shortfall, and uh, we're not building enough. And, and because of these supply chain issues and because of these labor issues, it's going to elevate the prices of, of already existing homes. So if you're, if you're waiting for a house or anticipating like, hey, I, I'm tired of this market right now. I am tired of this market. I'm going to go buy a new build. You may not be able to, even if you have the funds. And yeah. even if you do, the, the price is going to be so elevated because of the, these these conditions. That well, we're they're going to be elevated in the anticipation. If they tell you it's going to be done in December, yeah. plan on next December. I would say 10, <laughs> 10 to 12 months. Yeah. Which, you yeah. know, I, I, I did get a question from one of my clients yesterday. They're like, hey, how do you feel about new builds? They're and beautiful. I, they're wonderful. If you can <laughs> I mean, get yeah, one. if you can get one. And I, I, I told him, I'm like, if you can get it, you know, um, you'll be able to get a brand new home. You won't have to worry about anything. AC, you know, a lot of it's covered under the home warranty, you know, yeah. especially the first year. But waiting for it, you know, a year, 
a lot of life circumstances can happen. A oh, lot yeah. of things can happen in just a year. Oh yeah. You know, and and you'll be the good thing is you'll be in contract for that year for that price. You won't know what the interest rates will be at the time. Because they won't yeah, lock you in until like thirty days before. Is, we're in like such a like a, a fickle Weird. space yeah. because it's like housing market's going up, supplies to remodel a house is going up, interest rates are super low, stock market is just like has I do. its own personality. Yeah. And it, I mean, what do we do? Like, uh, it's, it's just like. Phew. Well, that's that's like the, the boom, question that, that we're talking about. Feel <laughs> the boom. <laughs> that is the question of the day, and and I get that a lot. What do I do? And yeah. they they a lot of clients, a lot of people will rely on me to make that decision for them, and I can't. You can't. You know, and it's it's a it's a tough decision because I you know there are arguments to say this housing market's going to crash. There are arguments to say it's going to continue on. Everything that I'm seeing is continuing on. Um, I don't believe the U.S. government will allow the housing market to correct in a significant way. Okay. And and the way we've been purchasing houses lately with, you know, the large sums of down payment, the uh, interest rate the way it is, um, the, the people that are have already put their equity in. So people buying a house for a hundred, two hundred thousand more than what the house is worth. Yeah. They're already they've already invested. They're not selling. Yeah. You know, there's so many factors that that make this housing market significantly strong. I don't believe there's going to be an overcorrection anywhere. Nope. I don't think so. And and I haven't. I've told you that from day one. Nope. I've told you guys that from day one. I don't <laughs> think there's going to be a correction. I I do want to talk about and get your opinion on this, Robert. Yes. So, uh, for example, when I'm talking about um, buying a home and upgrading it to yep. make it look nice for maybe people who don't can possibly have the funds to do that, what is your opinion on people Purchasing a home, like you take people out all the time to look at houses. Yeah. I don't like that. I don't like this. This doesn't fit this. This doesn't fit this. What about doing something like a renovation loan? Like, hey, you may not love this, but here's a vision yeah. in getting a renovation loan and talking to their lender and getting a contractor out there, kind of helping people understand you're not going to find the perfect home anymore for the price that you want. And, and typically when you refer to renovation loan, you, you um, reference more that there's equity in the house in some way. Potential equity, yes. yeah, in that area. So you find a house that might be a little bit, and this, of course, you would know I like this word, dilapidated. And you know the, the home surrounding it. So you find this, like, gem, you call it, for 320000 yep. And the houses around it are maybe worth 450000 Correct. You go into it and you're like, ew. That's why it's worth three twenty, but if you go, ooh, that's why it's worth three twenty, and you change your your mentality and know that you could yep. potentially upgrade it, and then put together a spreadsheet yep. of what it could possibly cost, and I know that you have to have a contractor to go in there, a licensed contractor. You do, however, that doesn't mean you can't go out by yourself and buy some of this stuff. You can't go on offer up or Facebook. Like yep. perfect example, I had contractors. In one of the properties today, and this is why it was late for the podcast, uh, they were putting in flooring, and they were using their saw to yeah. cut it. Freaking shattered the Arcadia door, shattered it. And I walk upstairs. I'm like, that wasn't in my budget, <laughs> but uh, yeah. I had already put together a spreadsheet and knew where I could move money around and what I could do and what I could buy myself or what I could find. So immediately I went on offer up. If you guys don't yep. know what OfferUp is, it's like a place where people, maybe they're doing construction as well, and they're getting rid of a door they may not like and because they're upgrading it, and we'll just take the door they don't like because you might like it, you know? So I found a door for like 250 bucks, which is cheaper than buying at Home Depot or wherever. Yeah, follow those OfferUps in Scottsdale. Oh, my gosh. They're <laughs> so – yeah, they're so great. I swear these people import things from like yeah. – like, I don't know – What's the word? Like Italy. I, who knows? They get rid of the old ones and they, you can find so much cool free stuff on offer up. I'm always touting, you know, to find things like that. But with that being said, put together a spreadsheet. Oh. So when Robert takes you out and you see a house that is meh, and then you re change yeah. your vision, go home with yourself or your husband or whomever. Don't call Robert because he's not allowed to make decisions for you. And put it together Sometimes. of what you think things would cost. Go on Google, go on HomeDepot.com, go on Amazon, and, and start looking at prices. Yeah. And you can find that one faucet, the same as another faucet, for $100 cheaper if you just take the time to look. So time is valuable. Time is money. I get that. But yeah. 
just don't turn on the TV at night and watch your favorite show <laughs> and get online and look or have your favorite show on and look. And there's so many different ways that yeah. we could change uh, the way that we're purchasing right now. Yeah, I think um, as far as like a rehab job, not a flip, I guess. If you if you're looking at it, you have to kind of take into account that there are labor issues. One, are you going to find the help? Um, those renovation loans typically are shorter term. You know, anywhere from like three to six it's months. Usually, yeah, six um, months. The terms aren't aren't there. For, you know, they're not a thirty year loan. You can't make the small payments over time. So you're going to want to pay. You're going to have to figure out a timeline for that. Uh, flips for us. You know, I did I did a number of flips for um, for a couple of years there. Uh, finding trades that will actually show up on time, finding yeah. trades that will finish the work, finding trades that won't screw you out of a, a brand new roof. I mean, we had that too. We, yeah. we paid uh, $10,000 to, to remove um, those shake roofing mm -hmm. and re-asphalt it. And then when, they, when we finally got it on market to resell, uh, they found that the asphalt shingles were old. Oh, sh Nike. So, like, we were just wanting to close it, so we ended up buying a whole new roof, paying yeah. twenty grand for a roof. So, the, all that profit went in there. Yeah, that's that's frustrating. It's super yeah. frustrating. So, even coming up with like a game plan. <laughs> it, 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 not, I mean, literally, that's what it is. It's a game plan. Like, I I always talk about this. I'm an Excel yeah. spreadsheet person. Like, everything in yeah. my life is on an Excel spreadsheet. And then I have numbers of people like this is a flooring person. This is this person. This is this person. Talk to your friends and family. My kids, my brother, like yep. my friends have been helping me through this project. People can help you. You just have to find the resources. So this is not the end all. Yeah, take FMLA time. <laughs> Get on YouTube University. Uh, learn how to floor. Like, I, like, I just, you're not joking. Like, this is true. What you're saying is very true. <laughs> so, like, I, the only things I wouldn't necessarily do myself because I don't feel comfortable is plumbing and electrical. Oh, you know, you, you I think you want to hire those like, oh, oh, shit. But the rest of it, you can figure that shit out. Like you can figure out how to retile a, a roof. You can figure out how to put flooring in. You can figure out how to put cabinets in. But the, the two things are electrical. <laughs> oh, I, I think she has a story. No, just love <laughs> it because I've been working on the plumbing electro. I've been learning about oh, it. And, <laughs> and on Saturday, I shocked myself three times. I was trying to change an outlet with the electricity on. Which is so dumb of me, <laughs> and and then I like I cut some plumbing, and and then that was fine. But Ashley's you just, got overalls, but she's not you just learn <laughs> so many things. And but here's the best part about yeah. this is, at the end of the day, when uh, I asked my boys, my older, even Colby and my brother to help me demo it, I researched demo. And yeah. It was like twenty five hundred dollars, <laughs> and I'm like twenty five hundred dollars. I've got kids at home, I've got kids, I got friends, but I'm like, no, I have kids. I don't want to put my friends through that. And then some of my friends are like, why don't you ask us a demo? I'm like, do you have a sledgehammer? I'm like, I do. Yeah. I'm like, we need to take out some aggression. I'm like, oops, sorry, we're done. But it's like, you can find resources. There's so many oh. amazing resources. So when we read stuff about the, the Evergrande in China, it is not going to be the same thing as the Liam brothers 13 years ago. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't believe there's going to crash. But again, it's it's a significant sign, and it's causing some fear, continued fear here in the housing market. You know, I, I will probably see forty more YouTube videos in the next couple of days regarding how the market's going to crash. I don't believe that's the case. Mm. You know, I do. I believe it'll stabilize. Yes, um, in the resale market, I, I, I am concerned it's going to continue on, especially seeing you know news articles like that. Not able to finish houses. Um, it's all it's going to do is aggravate the resale market. It might push people away from the new build market, but yeah. it's just going to aggravate and increase prices in the resale market. I was looking at some new builds for those of you who are watching that are in Arizona off yeah. of Tatum and Bell, which used to be, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that land. Yeah. That land has been owned, I mean, before I was born. And uh, the grandparents had gifted it to the grandson. Yeah. And he ended up selling it to D.R. Horton for, what, $80 million? That project's been going on. It was supposed to be finished in 2021. Obviously, we skipped a year in life. I think they make movies about that. And then, uh, so now it's coming along, but it's like, how it says coming soon, coming soon, coming soon. So it's been coming soon for like two years. Oh, wow. And it's going to be gorgeous. Oh, and then I looked at the beginning prices and the square footage. Yeah. So in 85254 uh, in Phoenix, well, I guess it's Scottsdale, Arizona, it's like almost $357 per square foot. Shit, you know. That's, Sorry. that's a lot. Sorry, I said shit. <laughs> well, you can say whatever you want. Uh, RCO Network, we have no... Uh, but that's crazy. At RCO Network, we have no regard for uh, cursing at uh, the 5 o'clock hour. Uh, it's after hours, almost. Almost anyway. after hours. No, it's 4.09. <laughs> but 
I, I am I am concerned for the big builders. Yeah. I am. And I don't know if this is going to affect them or not. I do have a new bill that's closing this Friday, and it took nearly 11 months to finish. And I was so concerned that the buyer, you know, um, would have had another credit issue. I mean, a lot of it was to build up and get their credit in line just to even yeah. make the purchase. But uh, with those new builds, again, they don't they don't do anything loan wise until the 30 days before. The la- yeah, the last you minute. know. And luckily, like everything squared away last week regarding the loan, we close on on Friday, and I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> you know. And they bought that house for 267, which is amazing too. You're in contract well, the, that, for almost that a full year. That is actually the only benefit that right now, if you bought a house a year ago. The interest rates are actually, I mean. They're just an inch it, it, smidge higher yeah, than they I, were I don't generally. even know if they say they're higher or lower or higher or lower because they're just, they're they're very consistent, which has been fabulous for yeah. us, which has been amazing. And we're, we're very lucky. So we have to count uh, the things that we're, we're blessed about. And yeah. interest rates is what we are blessed about because imagine getting that situation and then interest rates skyrocket. Uh, so that's been a super awesome thing that we have right now. <laughs> uh, so, but, so one of the other things I did want to talk about, though, is that people are moving to the suburbs. And mm-hmm. out of the top 10 cities, oh, uh, yeah, let's look yeah. at it. This, is, this is amazing. Oh, why do I have a vein popping out of my head right here? Uh, you got, oh, it's because you're... you're uh, this is, maybe this is too tight. Oh. <laughs> maybe you're just feeling the housing boom. I'm so excited. I'm uh, so, so excited. So there's 10 U.S. cities yeah. across the U.S. that are feeling the boom. You know, okay. and uh, two out of those 10 are right here in the greater Phoenix area. So if you look at the chart, um, you'll see right down here, Goodyear and Buckeye are, are two of the cities, the fastest growing suburbs across the nation. <laughs> I always am full of stories. So uh, I was Another talking to one of my buddies and <laughs> he was mentioning, he's like, you got to buy out in Goodyear and and that whole area in Buckeye. I'm like, oh, it's so far. Ever been to West Buckeye? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I was kind of making fun of him. He's got a little country voice and stuff. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> now you pull this up. I'm going to say I'm sorry that I made fun of you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually didn't research it. And, and he's not even in technically, like, real estate in general. Yeah. He just pays attention. And uh, so I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Morristown. It's Buckeye. Oh, <laughs> <Good> year. Morristown. <laughs> she's, still, she's, still, she's going long on Morristown. Wait, no, go still. back to that one more time. Oh, I shit. want to look there. for one more second. I saw Irvine. Irvine. Oh, yeah, Irvine. Oh, Irvine. Okay, Los Angeles. Interesting. Ir- Irvine is kind of like a... Uh, South of- Jordan? Salt Lake City? Interesting. Uh, Boise, I don't... No, Looks but like it's... P- uh, or, uh, the Meridian near Boise. Yeah, no, I knew Texas was going to be crazy. Everyone talks about Texas. Texas? No, that was terrible. Well, again, because... I mean, and think about it, too. As we have a surge in cases and the stuff that's going well, on now, people are areas, still... Why areas, Robert? Because they want to be near Metro City. Okay. You know, and uh, they want to pay the suburb prices. And yeah. so, if you know uh, Goodyear and Buckeye, those are more affordable. Those are around the 300. You know, funny thing is like a year ago, maybe maybe even two years ago, uh, the average around that area was like 200, 250. Yeah. And now you don't find anything less than three, 350. Really? Yeah. I wouldn't. I, I haven't looked. Do you guys remember um, for as, uh, Phoenician or Arizonians or whatever, Arizonians. when Anthem <laughs> came into play and we're like, oh my gosh, who would move to Anthem? And now it's like its own city and people like in Anthem don't leave Anthem. I feel like that's what like Buckeye in that area is going to be. Like they're building up yeah. so much that like once you buy out there, like you're not leaving. Yeah, it's those master plan communities that they, they, they want to, it's like entertainment and everything all inclusive. So they yeah. keep you there, you know, and I, I'm starting to see that in city centers too, like, like near, yeah. um, um, Agritopia and Gilbert. Yeah. I know you don't like the venture out in Gilbert. <laughs> That's where I live. I got to pack a sleeping bag and a lunch box. But, but, but so think of Kirlin, right? You yeah. get the, the stay at home work, work and stay, work and live in the same place. Yeah. They have that going on near Agritopia and Gilbert. I know, I um, that, that build is like, hey, let's just keep everybody here. You know, keep everybody kind of turning the wheel in the same location. Well, I think that's what California well, obviously has done, and yeah. Arizona is kind of recreating that. Because where, where do we have to build? Just out. Further out. I mean, <laughs> think about it. We don't build well, up Well, Phoenix out here. is really a big we town. Build out. Like, like, like Phoenix in itself really is not designed around its city center. No, not at all. I mean, there's barely anybody lives downtown. They have a. They just got a fries downtown. Oh, really? Which would be like a Kroger. Didn't they close down the Hard Rock? 
That's where Fry's is. Oh, well. oh wait, no, that's is that the truth or a lie? I it's don't close. Remember. to I haven't it. been downtown. It's in on a the while. same. It's on the same street on Jefferson. I just don't know if it's there or there. But no, down our downtown has been impressing me. It's been building well, up, and, and it's not because the Suns were in the the playoffs. <laughs> We have these like little momentous like oh like oh let's go downtown the Suns are playing and then as soon as they lose it's like oh well, yeah, well we're a fair weather fans <laughs> yeah yeah we're we're kind of and then then you go to like the like hometown games and you see more from out of state because all these out of staters are moving here yes <laughs> I know How, who played uh, Cardinals on Sunday I know but we won I know we won well oh it was the Vikings wasn't there more Vikings fans than, uh, <laughs> yeah. than Cardinals. I was bratty on Sunday. I, like, put a face mask on and took a nap because I've been busting my ASS, like, working yes. and doing these houses <laughs> and stuff. And Sunday, yeah. I just, like, crashed out hard. Like, I never take naps. And I don't lay on the couch all day on Sundays, but I legit lay on the couch almost If you need day. a butcher block countertop, Ashley makes a mean butcher block countertop. I saw on her Facebook, she, like, she was over there, like, putting it together. All different colors because she was using the off color like you know, two by ones or whatever they were, mm-hmm. and and she put it all together and she sanded it down. It would look awesome in the six hours. Looked to awesome stand in the that. kitchen. <laughs> six hours. Why? Because they were out of building material for butcher block, so yeah. I had to buy two by fours, which are rounded corners. But for a butcher block, you want it flat. So I was like, well, I have no other option, so yeah. I'm just gonna sand this. Six hours. Ashley's just not another pretty face. She knows how to use a sander. I have a lot of tools. I recently bought a tile saw. <laughs> I bought this jigsaw thing. And, well, that's another thing, too, going back to renovation. Yeah. It's actually cheaper just to buy your own tools. And YouTube, like you talked about YouTube college, I was recently talking to somebody, and they're like, we've learned more on YouTube, and our children learn yeah. more on YouTube and how to do things than we would learn in school. Yeah. Like, I've learned more I, buying tools and talking to the people at different stores and them tell me how to do it and then watching videos then I could learn probably going to contracting school. Well, this whole studio and everything we got here is the no, same thing. Yeah, no, you've done amazing. Like, you guys can't see this whole thing because the cameras are only, like, on me. <laughs> Hold on, and Roberto. Oh. Wait. They're only on Ashley. <laughs> she is the she is the one and only Great American Title. Yeah. Anyway, um, enough of you. <laughs> enough, enough. No more of you. <laughs> well, that's another thing, too, talking to your title companies. Yeah. Uh, so reaching out to whether it's myself um, or if you have a connection with a title company, typically title reps or marketing people yeah. in title have connections with investors and contractors and laborers and all of that because we that's how we build our book of business. And then real estate agents usually have contractors and all of those. So if you're thinking about buying a home and you can't afford that the perfect home to the perfect color you want and you want to buy a property that might not be to your perfection – then reach out to your sphere and just start calling people and put together your Excel spreadsheet and figuring out how much it's going to cost you. Uh, instead of paying over price, what is it, twenty, thirty thousand for a home that might be yeah. perfect, how about you don't pay that, keep your dollar bills, go buy a couple of tools, reach out to your resources, and get your family together and just do it. There's going to be some funny moments, <laughs> like when people turn on the water and not all the valves are shut off. Oh boy! <laughs> and, I mean, there's just there's so many, but it's it's a bonding experience with you and your family. And I know people have jobs, but that's what weekends are for. Yeah, and, and a great opportunity to to build and uh, and customize to customize your own home the way you want it. Yeah. Um, just to kind of go over some stats real quick as we're yes. wrapping up the show today, Miss, because that's what we're doing. We're at the end. Demand index. I've been following. Um, it was going towards a balanced market. I would say May, uh, April this year, and now we're kind of swinging back to this this high demand index. Yeah. So it just means uh, more people are buying, more people are uh, that the demand hasn't gone away, you know. And of course, you can see there the supply. Green means we have little supply. Red right. means we have oversupply. And the demand index. Green means we have a lot of people wanting houses, and the and in red it means there's not enough people wanting houses. So. Green isn't necessarily good. You want yellow on both sides if you want a balanced market. And I can, I, I can obviously I concur because it's factual. Right. Uh, but I believe, in in my opinion, or what I've watched, that people thought we were going to have a boom, so they stopped buying, and yeah. that's why more houses were available. And we were talking like what three weeks ago, and you're like, oh, we didn't get countered, and they accepted. And now everyone realizes like it's not going down; it just keeps going up. So yeah. now people are like, 
Nikes, <laughs> and now they're back to buying again. Yeah, there's a there's a little bit of seasonality coming back. You'll yeah. see a little bit of a decline, not too much, uh, but because we have November coming up, we have Christmas coming up, so people are think, getting a little bit. I was going to ask you that question. Do you think that's going to change anything? <sighs> that remains to be seen because the old school me says, "Oh, the market's going to calm down. The market's going to be, you know, fine. You know, we'll we'll uh, build some inventory back in January." Hard to tell now. I mean, the the last year has really thrown every kind of predictable sense and nature that I have kind of out the window a little yeah. bit. And so now it's just kind of like a week by week, a month by month and see, see where we're at. Let's look at the numbers and see the direction. I did not anticipate the demand index increasing. You know, I would have thought it would have decreased a little bit, but again, with these housing shortages, the building um, and concerns about the market. Now, now you see the demand going a little bit higher because uh, people want to be in those city centers. They see the virus kind of getting a little out of control again. So they're hunkering back down, not wanting to sell again. So it, it, various reasons, a lot of things and end a day, but you have to make a decision for yourself and what's best for you today. That's what's yeah. best for you tomorrow. What's best for you today. Yeah, and planning. And planning. Number one is planning. So, so the last thing I wanted to show before we leave today was uh, kind of the... the... Uh. <laughs> no, no, we're almost done. So um, uh, looking at the uh, median price of homes right here in Maricopa County uh, is running at about 422000 So we continue we to increase. Up. We keep going up. We didn't. We haven't yeah. plateaued. Uh, median price uh, sales keep going up. You know, And this is all of Maricopa County's. Well, and, and people often ask me, you know, being entitled, like, Ash, what do you see? Yeah. And I, I can only give my my educated opinion yeah. on what I research because I, I don't live. I mean, I do live in this world, but I'm not out there searching for homes constantly. I mean, I search certain zip codes for what I'm doing, but uh, I continuously told people, like, just buy now, buy now, buy now, buy now. Because it's this is not stopping. Yeah, the, the crazy part is there's so many narratives. So many people that are trying to sway you one way or the other to buy, to sell, all this stuff. I see it on a micro level, the interactions I have with other agents and the contracts that we do, all the way to a macro level, which is these these reports. And they, they there's some inconsistency there. You know, there's still an aggressive market, despite what some reports are saying the housing market's slowing. Uh, and then other reports that say the, the housing market's still continuing. But the, the real world of it is there's still a lot of people looking for houses. We're not getting 20, 30 offers on a house anymore, but we're getting like five or six. But you only need one. Right. So there's still some competition. So if you're thinking, you know, I'm going to hold off a little bit more, if that's what best fits you, that's what best fits you. I say go with that. Whatever yeah. you're comfortable with. At the end of the day, you live there, not me. Exactly. Well, I think people are also um, they're searching on the outskirts. Oh, yeah, they're branching out further, further out. You know, yeah. um, uh, Morristown is a good one. <laughs> if there I was a buying it, I opportunity. Apache Junction was really uh, awesome. May, maybe. I mean, put you closer to the superstitions. But. Or Country Thunder. You guys are into that. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. here we go. <laughs> Country Thunder. So as we uh, wrap up today's show, uh, I want to thank you, Miss Miller, for thank coming you. on the show. Great American Title has been a tremendous support for RCO Network, as well as me personally. Thank you so much. Thanks, babe. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was... <laughs> I made a mistake, called her babe. So she's my babe for the day. <laughs> Don't tell Violet, but, uh, you know, she doesn't watch the show. So. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, hang in there. Um, we got your toodles. back. <laughs> toodles. <laughs> toodles. <laughs>